Something that seems seldom talked about is just how overly flirtatious and sensual those in the indie VTuber community can be. And no, I'm not talking about the lewd tubers who stay in their lane, creating content on their own platforms, and otherwise remaining professional when not in creator mode. What I am talking about are the people who happen to be grown adults, mind you, who act like high schoolers discovering puberty for the first time who can't stop being thirsty over the next moving thing that'll remotely entertain them for an iota of a second. These adults, these quote-unquote mature people over the age of 18, taint the population of VTubers with their frankly disgusting behavior, seeking sexual gratification and e-dating urges like it's Tinder but on Twitter or Discord. Let's talk about one such prolific and disgusting creator known as Torakaru, the so-called Tiger Demigod VTuber, who has harassed many female presenting VTubers and even committed assault. Before we get into it though, a few points. First, everything described here is alleged. Also, please do not harass any individuals mentioned in this video. At the time of writing this script, Torakaru has already deactivated his Twitter, YouTube, and TikTok. His Twitch is still up, but with a default profile picture, no about section, and all his videos and clips have been hidden or deleted. On the other hand, you should support the victims that'll be mentioned in this video. I'll be sure to include their links in the description below with a source to their stories and experiences. Please give your warm support for those affected and support them on their VTuber journey as they recover and move on from this dark time in their life. In addition, this video will contain mentions of sexual harassment, assault, and even grooming allegations. I understand these topics can be very distressing, so please click away from the video if you do not wish to see or hear about this. Your own mental health is important. Please take care of yourself. Without further ado, let us talk about Torakaru, the sex pest. Honey? Honey is such a good girl. <laughs> Hi, baby girl. I would be your sugar daddy on God, no cap, and, and give you everything that I could possibly. Emily, Emily, Emily. I love Emily so much. Torakaru, as far as I know, has been a VTuber since 2022. His first design is an orange-haired cat boy with an olive green jacket with a light brown or tannish fur-lined hood. He seemed to have this design for a while, and it wasn't until probably around 2023 when his 2.0 design was being teased that I personally became aware of this guy on Twitter. And from the get-go, I got bad vibes about this guy. I don't know what it was exactly, as my memory doesn't go back that far, but I'm pretty sure it went something a little like this. His design teaser popped off. He started getting hundreds of follows, inflated his ego and clout on the platform. And the dude kind of gave, like, e-boy answers in the replies, playboy vibes. He just seemed super flirty towards women, and I didn't like that. I don't know what it was exactly, but either way, I just like this guy from the get-go. I think he also subtweeted about other guys complaining about his design popping off that gave him a bunch of followers, and that just further pushed me away. Needless to say though, I am biased against this guy, and I'm not afraid to admit that. Anyway, his 2.0 design looks like this. Longer orange hair with a small black strand, tiger-like ears, has that Dorito-shaped body with broad shoulders, skinnier waist, washboard abs, thick arms, and fat man tits that a lot of people seem to enjoy in this space. Not my thing, though. As well as flaming green flames motif and a spirit tiger toggle. Taking away the man piloting the VTuber, this is honestly a pretty cool design. It's eye-catching, appealing, has a good color palette, and really sells the Tora equal tiger motif. The model artist, Ronchu, did an amazing job and their art is fantastic. It's just a shame that this guy who commissioned the model turned out to be a massive creep, to which we'll get into very shortly. Content creating wise, he seemed to engage in karaoke's, ASMR content, just chatting streams, and playing games. He was also a prolific skeb user, racking up costs of over 1 million yen from skebs alone, which in this case probably equated to about over $7,000. 
Scab for the Uninitiated, by the way, is a platform where you can get art done by Japanese creators at a relatively affordable price, at the caveat of not being able to communicate any feedback or changes during the actual art creation process. I personally compare it to like a gotcha, but with art of your OCs, and I can definitely see how it's addicting. But anyway, in this case, Tora often got art of himself and NSFW art of him and his mutuals or friends engaged in lewd or explicit acts. He even went so far as to make a few lists, one of which was called Tora's Breeding List, where he put literally hundreds of people in to eventually get NSFW art with. Like, oh. how fucking horny do you have to be to get NSFW art with even over a dozen people? That's actually gross. And sure, it says meme list, but you'll find out this guy is 100% not memeing. Just wait. Unfortunately, on the surface, it seemed like this guy had a solid reputation in the community, even with all his questionable, lewd content, with very little being spoken badly about this guy except for the few that just didn't vibe with him since the beginning. Perhaps this is because the VTuber community, especially around 2022 and 2023, is what I'd personally consider pretty hypersexual, in that flirty comments were everywhere, and people often encroach boundaries unprompted. I don't know if that's ever been fixed, or if I just finally muted enough people or hermited into my own corner enough to see less of it in 2024, but that was definitely a noticeable thing when I was starting out in my VTuber career. Anyway, on March 17th, 2024, a brave victim by the name of Lily, the Strawberry Moo Tuber, spoke up about her experience with Tora in the Los Angeles area around the time of Anime Expo 2023. I will be summarizing her document and focusing on certain parts to make the script flow better, but I strongly advise that if you have the time to please read her document yourself. It's concise and to the point, and Lily can explain her situation and experience much better than a retelling by anyone else. In Lily's document, she talks about how she was going to meet up with a group of friends in the LA area in 2023. Her friends were going to AX, and she was going to the Hololive concert. At this time, Tora and Lily had been friends for over a year, and, quote, Tora unfortunately was like my rock when I was coming out of a rough breakup back in December of 2022. I hung out on a server and with everyone else there to cope and take my mind off things. And since he had helped me, I was willing to look past some things he said, what what not. I was vulnerable, and I guess in a very human way wanted attention that I missed. Tora knew how to press every button and had known me long enough to figure out how to get me to even slightly reciprocate. I let my walls and guard down, and around this time I had even begun catching feelings for him. It was during this time between April leading up to AX and July that Tora ramped up the flirting. He mentioned how he wants to have intimate acts with her, sent her an unsolicited photo, asked for lewds and audio, wanting to make out, and even admitted to taking care of himself when listening to her voice on stream. This is not an isolated incident, by the way has been doing this behavior to other VTubers, which we'll talk more about later. But already, you can tell this guy is bad news. Not only is he extremely horny to the point that it's obscene and quite disgusting, it gets even worse. They meet up after the day's events to take an Uber to the Airbnb to meet more of Lily's VTuber friends. It's at this time, waiting for their Uber, that Tora admits he's actually been seeing someone for a few months now and doesn't actually want to do anything intimate with Lily. Lily is upset for having been led on for months leading up to this day, which is understandable given the mixed signals this guy kept giving out. During the Uber ride there, Tora held her hand and apologized, badgering her if she forgave him, which is already gross for invading her personal space without consent in the first place. If someone's mad at you, don't touch them. It's simple. But unfortunately, when they stayed at their friend's Airbnb for the night, all would not be good and relaxing. While resting on different parts of a very large couch, Tora had crawled over on top of Lily and whispered into her ear, kissing her cheek. Lily describes her experience in harrowing, emotionally poignant words of how she felt trapped and afraid. She did not consent. She did not agree for this to happen. She did not want this to happen. It's horrible. No one should be put into this vulnerable state. Thankfully, Tora was not given the chance to do further harm. Her friend, Laser, heard the commotion and checked in on them, causing Tora to practically leap away and feign innocence. An image taken by Tora after the encounter is proof that Laser, indeed, was checking on them. And this image was passed off as Laser looking ominous in the doorway of his room because it was the only lit thing around them. After that night, Lily confronted him on the 13th of July of 2023 about the situation, 
where he avoided discussing the assault. It was later in the first quarter of 2024 that she was able to properly process and come to terms that the situation she was forced into was assault. On March 15th of 2024, she canceled an upcoming collab she had with him and no longer wanted to be his friend. She gives receipts about that exchange, which you can see in full in her document. But a few interesting words I've noticed from Tora are how he immediately asks if there's anyone else involved that he should know about, which is already suspect because either he's getting ready to block or try to appeal to them in private. Then, not only does he proceed to fail at apologizing by saying sorry it came off that way and never using the word assault to describe his actions, but he did admit he got on top of her and did unconsensual acts towards her, which proved Lily's story. At the end of their exchange, he even double checks to try get this to stay between them and says not to impulsively make a twit longer, which is really gross and manipulative behavior. He clearly knows he's in the wrong and that Lily has evidence by his own reaffirming statements that he's done wrong things to her and he clearly doesn't want this to go public because it'll ruin his reputation. But you know what? Good on Lily for standing up to her guns and airing out her truth regardless of what Toro tried to weasel his way out of. Because of her strength to publicize her document, it led to a cascade of everyone who's ever been done dirty by this man who finally have the courage to air out their grievances as well. When I say this guy is a sex pest, I really, really do mean he's a sex pest. If you don't know what this means, a sex pest is a person who sexually harasses or assaults another person. This man has done numerous things, ranging from petty behavior such as follow and unfollowing creators to bait them to follow him back, to more disgusting behavior such as sending unsolicited pictures and lewd audios, as well as trying to get their IRL name and pictures. This man truly viewed other VTubers as if they're only objects of pleasure for himself to use to get off to, and not an actual human being who deserved respect. I've seen dozens of testimonies and experiences from those that have interacted with this man, it all boils down to one simple thing. This man sexually harassed all these people. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself. For this section, I'll be going over all the testimonies that I encountered on Twitter. This might be long, but I truly want to emphasize just how much of a sex pest this guy truly was. And that, again, none of this is exaggerated or fake or an isolated incident. All of this happened to all these people, and my heart goes out to each and every one who became a victim to this guy's horrible behavior. Their Twitter handles will be in the corner as we go over each of their stories. If you can, please support these victims. Akon Sapphire is one of the first few people to speak out, backing up Lily's statements with a statement of their own. In these screenshots, they recollect that Tora made them feel good about their body and voice. He made them feel confident and sexy. They flirted a lot and consensually for a time, almost met up, but they didn't. They remember Tora bragging about how he had a sexual encounter with Lily at the Airbnb and weren't made aware that Tora had been in a relationship until three months after he began dating his partner. Akon realized they were being led on and began to distance themselves. They also recollect an incident where Tora got drunk on livestream and openly bragged about how he was going to have intimate relations with Akon when they met up. Tora also had an audio recording that Akon was going to allow him to suck their breasts when they met up, and according to Tora, since it was pre-recorded consent, they could not take it back. Just to clarify, this is not how consent works. Consent has to be given at the time of any action being done, and it has to be clear and enthusiastic. If there is any hesitance, any reluctance, it is not consent. It has to be a yes. Tora would have been wrong if he tried to do this terrible action to Akon since they would not be consenting. From the sounds of things, it does not seem like they met up, which is a relief. Shoko provides a bit more context, reaffirming that Tora didn't have much influence almost two years ago when he was at 1,000 followers compared to 22,000 in 2024. Shoko also mentions how Tora wanted basically private information that would dox themselves. And even after saying no, Tora asked again. That's fucked up behavior. As VTubers, many like their anonymity. Do not go harassing VTubers, or any creator for that matter, for personal information like that. First, it's not safe, especially if you're a minor. And second of all, it's none of your god dang business! Ren, an artist by the handle Ren Draws Disney also lists out the numerous lists that they were put into that Tora had managed. One is the infamous Tora's breeding list, another being Tora's harem, and another being Tora's brain melters. 
I like how he tries to pass his sexual harassment off as, oh, it's just a meme list, when, nah, this is just harassing if people didn't ask for it. But it's also wild that literally hundreds of people are in this list. Like, that's just gross. Why do you have so many girls on here? Another victim is Zion, who has given us many screenshots of their interaction with Tora. You can see in these screenshots that Tora basically immediately starts with, I love you. Compliments on a physical attraction, in this case, their model. Spams them with I love yous, despite Zion's clear reluctance and ewes, which I think are really funny. Tora then tries asking for pics, kind of tries peer pressuring or pestering to get those pics. And then once he gets said pics, he love bombs some more. Darts saying he'll smash and smooch. He seems to do random messages that objectify his target. Zion gives another example where they wanted to report a notification bug to Discord and asked Tora to help and he immediately spans them with NSFW comments. Also, keep in mind these dates on the screenshot for every victim going forward. It'll be relevant for later. Ibe Shoujo speaks out about her experience in 2022 where they had a no flirting in their bio. But guess who tried to circumvent that? You guessed it, Tora. I fucking hate this guy, I swear to God. Root, despite telling him she was married, was not spared from Tora's harassment. Instead of thinking it was just joking around, Tora had admitted he took care of himself after looking at an IRL pic and said NSFW things towards her regardless of her marital status. Ying Yue expresses their experience with Tora in a thread. Unfortunately, at the time, they were in a vulnerable state in their life and fell for the attention and love that Tora seemed to bombard them with. They were unfortunately led on and goaded into a flirtatious and sexual interaction before they knew it. And I find it truly harrowing and disgusting that this man was taking advantage of UA like this. They shared some screenshots of the interactions as proof, and it's just wild how out of pocket and shameless this guy is. I hope UA is doing better. Amphi shares us some pictures of how god dang insistent this man was for some dog's pics, despite her saying that's her boundary. I absolutely hate how much this man keeps trying to push boundaries because he's so horny he needs pics to get off to. Gross. Jury shares a screenshot where Tora casually admits that he does deliberately lead on a lot of women, and that he doesn't actually like them back, and then he tries baiting Jury into thinking she was the special one. That's so fucked up and beyond disgusting. I hate filthy behavior like this. People's emotions aren't yours to toy with. Baku shares some screenshots of their own as well. They show that Tora admits he finds their design hot, wants NSFW art together, continues to call them cute despite Baku admitting they have a partner and then even tries to get their IRL name is definitely harassment. Eye Candy shares her experience as well, and these screenshots are just… I can't even. This guy is so shameless in just how he asks for nudes, being horny, and even wanting lewd audio. Like, what? This is for real harassment, not even asking for consent beforehand. Bruh! Who shared some screenshots as well with her interaction with Tora. Tora admits he followed for selfies, which demonstrates his first for physical appearance and says he's her type because she's not a bitch. Which, huh? Bro, your standards are so fucking dirt low, that's insane. Whose skull emoji re response is so accurate? <laughs> Miri shares her experience as well. Like others who've shared their experience, Tora responds pretty sexually and tries to lead her on about Miri being his one and only. He also did try to get personal information like IRL pics and location. Miri also expresses worry that talking about him positively in the past such as calling Tora a harmless himbo and meeting other good people through him may have accidentally given the impression Tora was good to others when he still had a relatively clean reputation. I just want to say, personally, do not let the guilt eat you up. It's hard to know in the moment whether someone is truly good or not. Many like to think the better of someone, and Tora was definitely one to take advantage of that given trust to use for his own gain. Hindsight is always 20-20. Danny was one of his viewers who found Tora when they were going through a rough time after breaking up with their boyfriend. I can understand the sentiment of wanting to look at 2D boys when you feel lonely. They are also an artist and drew fan art of Tora and began hanging out in the voice chats in his Discord and began to get closer. Unfortunately, Tora took advantage of a moment of weakness and Danny started to have feelings for Tora. He asked for material from Danny, which Danny did send due to having said romantic feelings and it was consensual up until June. Screenshots show Tora was leading them on, which I can only imagine is rough to see in hindsight. Danny also mentioned how Tora asked for some art comms from her, but he wouldn't always pay. But the worst straw was that after Lily confronted Tora about his assault on March 15th, 
He called Danny to let her know, I love you so much and I care about you a lot. And then he's trying to save his own reputation with a close fan by trying to explain his situation with Lily through his own bias. But in that call, he said, It's good that you didn't like me. I hope you weren't expecting me to go to Mexico and see you. Which, in my opinion, is, What the fuck is wrong with you? That's so fucked up to say. First, you lead someone on for months to over a year, and then you just say that before you dip? Fucking wild. I'm so sorry this happened to you, Danny. And may you be able to heal. Vortex subtweeted about Tora around the end of June in 2023 with the following. There's this male VTuber that follows me that has been really disgusting towards a few of my female presenting friends. Since I unfollowed him, he keeps going back to me, following and unfollowing me for some stupid reason. At the time, they got backlash for subtweeting rather than just blocking, but their reasoning is pretty sound in that they didn't want this guy bothering their friends about why he was blocked. Then it turns out he instantly knew the subtweet was about him, which, bro, you know your behavior is wrong when you can tell a subtweet is about you. But anyway, he tries to apologize and explain his behavior with, I'm sorry if my behavior has not been to your liking, and I like to clean up my timeline of following often, so I refollow because I eventually remember. Oh yeah, Vortex does really good art. Like, what is this shit apology? Bro takes no accountability, and if you like an artist's art, stop following and unfollowing them because you either like their shit or you just want their clout. Disgusting, but thank you Vortex for speaking out back then. Stein met Tora in mid-2022 when he was 15, going on to 16. While none of Tora's interactions with Dine were NSFW, thank god, there were still some suspect things. Tora would often call Dine his favorite little sibling and even wasn't entirely against meeting up with a teenager in public. He even jokes at one point about, Hey FBI, if you're watching this, I'm not a groomer, and said that if he met when Dine was 18, he won't get arrested. Like, just for reference, Tora's around 25 or so, and this is just yikes. I can't imagine talking to someone 10 years younger than me like this. That's freaky. I hope Diane can recover well from this. Rin is also a minor who had the unfortunate situation of interacting with Tora. He often called Rin cute and said, I love you a lot. Tora did seem to have some sense to ask for Rin age multiple times, although that's kind of weird if it's more than once TBH, and said he's not sussy lewd towards minors, but then he asks for an IRL pic anyway of the minor. That's just gross as hell. I hope Rin can recover from this as well. In addition, minors on the internet, please don't send any of your private information to people over the internet. This was ingrained in my head when I was growing up, and it's more for your safety than anything. Please be safe, kids, and try not to interact with adults in a private setting in any capacity. No DMs, none of that. You never know who's out there who will prey on your innocence. Zenith mentions how Tora sent her unsolicited kissing audios in her DMs. She did this because she mentioned she listens to a lot of ASMR, but there was no discussion about the kissing beforehand, so the unsolicited audios were, indeed, unsolicited. She did confront him to stop saying I love you to her and no more voice stuff, to which he seems to have reacted decently, but that's probably because he was flirting and doing this stuff with other women at the same time, The one lost isn't a big deal to him. Here's the examples that Zenith provides, a trigger warning for potentially disturbing content. You can also skip here if you wish to avoid hearing this section. You're such a cutie. I want to kiss you. I love you. I love you, Zenith. You're the best. Glad to become your friend. <laughs> you're so skilled at art, and you're very cute, and very pretty. I saw your immersion bricks. You really, <laughs> you really are my type. I'm glad to get to know you a bit better. I like you. Mwah. And these are just the posts that have made it to my Twitter timeline since Lily's callout post. I'm sure there are numerous, numerous other victims of whom I haven't seen their stories, and for that I am sorry that I could not include everyone. But as we can see here from just these people alone, his behavior was repetitious and methodical in how he wielded his charisma, tried to lower people's defenses by buttering them up with flirtatious comments and compliments, 
while dating a partner, mind you. Just trying to find some sexual gratification for this entire thing to those that would fall victim to his love bombs and false praises. Needless to say, this man has been everywhere socially, interacting with so many creators, it's kind of insane. But when we see how this guy had over 22,000 followers on Twitter, it's kind of no surprise that many thought he was a big indie. However, did you guys know this actually averaged pretty low on Twitch in comparison? For the past 365 days from the time of writing the script, his average was around 25, which if you consider he had over 22,000 people following him on Twitter, well, let's just say it really is true when people say that numbers on one platform really doesn't mean jack shit in another, especially when it comes to Twitter followers to Twitch viewers. Makes sense though, Twitter is nothing at all related to live streaming. But you know what I call this? Dude's a chronic V-tweeter. Yeah, you heard me. A virtual or VTuber tweeter. It makes sense though if you think about it. How else can this guy have racked in so many followers on Twitter, besides maybe botting? If it isn't making interaction bait posts, crawling in people's replies and DMs while practically sucking up to them, trying to seem like a harmless guy on the surface, and getting to weasel his way into existing networks of friends to find people to harass in the guise of being overly friendly and lewd. Wowee. Oh, and not to add more mud to this guy, but there's no good section to bring this up, so I'm just dumping it here. Throughout 2023, Tora held a few art contests. The prizes for each art contest is honestly abysmal. And I hate to think that people actually participated for this lousy reward of max $50 or $75 for the number one winner. Like, really? I've seen other indies hold art contests that gave out hundreds of dollars for the top three winners. And all this guy can afford is 50 bucks? Bro, you spent over $7,000 on skebs. Where the hell did your money go? He even bragged about being middle class, so clearly he's got something. Because otherwise you'd be lower class or homeless, my dude. The fact no one called him out on these shitty contest rewards actually baffles me. Dude shouldn't have gone away with it four times in one year. That's actually insane. But anyway, back to the timeline of events. After Lily's document on the matter came out and people began sharing their experiences to empower her voice, many indie VTubers took notice. Since in Lily's document, Tora mentioned dating someone, it turned out that person who dated Tora decided to come out and speak about the matter. This person is Mizuki Nemu a sleep paralysis demon VTuber. His tweet reads, I am gender fluid, male presenting. I have been dating Tora Karu for 11 months. There are plenty of misunderstandings, but I will not deny what he put Lily through is unacceptable. This document will be linked below if you are curious, but a quick summary is, Mizuki gives us a brief timeline of his situation with Tora. The date of their first date, the open relationship they had at the time, the transition into a closed relationship after the AX events, and basically sounds like he told Tora to put the brakes down on the flirting without outright saying he was in a relationship. Personally, I don't really see why people find the need to hide their partners regardless of content creator size. Because let's be real, you should never, ever assume that your favorite content creator is single and ready to mingle. First of all, that's parasocial AF and gross. Second, your chances are extremely slim. Stop daydreaming and go touch grass if you need a partner that bad. Jesus fucking Christ. Anyway, Mizuki feels how he feels, so that's that. But the fun part of this document is this section right here. In one section, they say, What happened to Lily and many others is not okay. It was terrible and they did not deserve that to happen to them. Please send them your support and kind words, and I send them all of my support and condolences to what occurred. Which is nice and supportive and true. Send your support to the victims. But in the very next breath, they say this, after much consideration and chats with him, I will continue our relationship. However, I have informed him that what he did is not acceptable at all. As a woman, it is never okay to make a woman uncomfortable. It is never okay to beg for favors or corner us. I will do my best to help him understand the severity of the situation while concentrating in building a future with him. Outside of VTubing. Sir, what? I find it extremely difficult to understand how you can stand by the victims, but at the same time, continue to date and love the man who literally assaulted someone and sexually harassed countless others. That's actually kind of wild. If this is one of those I can change him situations, I personally think that shit's kind of baloney. It's just a fictional trope that's not at all realistic because real people are frankly quite difficult to change. Change happens if someone wants to genuinely change of their free will. You can't just bend or train someone to change. While I could speculate further, out of respect, I will just leave it there. 
personally, I think it's a bad take, but you know, you do you, I guess. It doesn't help that Lily then quote retweets Mizuki's post going, I debated holding my tongue on this, but why did you lie to me? You confidently told me in private you were not going to be with him anymore. You do not support me and the other victims by dismissing this. I'm incredibly hurt. The DM that Lily received from Mizuki clearly says that he will break up with him soon and sending all the support needed. One can only speculate that talks happened between Mizuki and Tora after this DM was sent and Mizuki decided to give Tora another chance. But man, I personally would not give Tora the time of day if I were in his position. But you know, I'm also not dating a flirty horny man so what do I know? But then, turns out, the next day they made another statement on the matter. Mizuki says the following. Last post regarding the situation. I understand if friends slash followers want to cut ties with me and where everyone is coming from. I said a lot before speaking to him in person as I believe breaking up over text is unfair. I apologize for what I said before and my change of heart. After 8 hours of talking and emotions, I learned a lot from him. I am not in 100% good terms. We are starting from square one. I'm working with him to hold himself accountable for what has happened and improve. I believe he can, but you don't have to. All I ask is to respect my choice. From here, our relationship is private. What happens, happens. If we stay or break up later, we'll stay private. Thank you for reading. I wish you and others a good day. Sleep well. Again, I still firmly do not believe one can simply fix another person, but you know, you do you, good luck with that. At least they did own up that they had a change of heart between when they messaged Lily to their documents, but still feels bad. But now it's Tora's turn for his own document, and oh god, it's a doozy. A link to the document in a mirror will be in the description just in case he finally decides to remove the document from its original source. But buckle up everyone, we got a long one here and I got some words to say. It starts off with him saying he'll take accountability. Yeah boy, we'll see about that. And then he has a TLDR about how he's going to graduate and disappear off the internet, basically. He then starts the rest of his documentary by saying he's thanking everyone who believed him and bruh. This is not what you say when everyone is canceling and hating your guts for being a sex pest. It's like this guy thinks he's lost a gold medal to a competition and only got silver. Like, bro, be for real. Terrible start. He then has this paragraph to say, which I think is fun to pick apart. There are probably a lot of people who think badly of me from word of mouth from seeing how I may interact with others and how I just generally post whatever I feel like saying. I am 100% sure there are many people that thought that guy is a flirt or that guy is a cloud chaser or that guy artificially inflates his numbers, so on and so on. And you know what I think about this? He's definitely heard these at least a few times before in his career and I wouldn't be surprised if there's a nugget of truth in all of these. I mean, we know for sure he's a flirt and probably a clout chaser, since he most likely pounced on popular female VTubers when he still had like 1k on Twitter. And honestly, I refuse to believe this guy got 22,000 authentic followers on Twitter without some artificial inflation, cause this guy is just, I don't know, it just doesn't seem to match up. But anyway, he continues, saying he tried to improve but honestly his behavior seems to not really have been improved fast enough since this guy had many. Many months of being with his partner to stop trying to sleep with other VTubers. And then he has this strange sentence of, Forgiveness is provided by the victims. That's a weird way to phrase it, and while I suppose it isn't necessarily wrong that the forgiveness comes from the victims, it also just doesn't seem appropriate to say in his apology document knowing what this guy did. Continuing on, he tries to insinuate Lily's document was more misleading than it was. And spoiler alert, no. Her document wasn't misleading at all. He first admits to his flirtatious behavior and says, 100% of the time I was either teasing or making a nasty joke, but sometimes I clearly forgot to ask if something like that is alright to say. I had to learn a lot about conversing properly in an online setting throughout the years. I still have more to learn. I don't know where this guy got his degree in how to talk like a human being, but wherever he learned over the years has obviously failed him. If your way of learning how to converse, even in an online setting only, is to flirt and lead people on romantically to try get sexual favors from, kindly go fuck yourself, thank you, and go touch some grass. Maybe touch grass forever, actually. You kind of need it. Anyway, he tries to defend calling a minor cute, and then talks about the allegations of cheating with his partner. According to his timeline, they actually went on their first date in April and didn't become exclusive until after the events at AX, aka after his assault, don't forget. 
But you can see in the screenshots, he still does say some NSFW things to people after this time. So is he really that innocent? Let's be for for real. This guy can't be committed. And the fact that he had a little sections trying to say he doesn't cheat is just laughable. I personally would consider all of his actions emotional cheating, and I would have dropped his ass if I was the scumbag's partner, but you know. Continuing on, Tora then basically sets a timeline for the events between him and Lily during AX. He basically confirms her story, says that during the Uber, he was being petty and prodding her, holding her hand and pesting her because, quote, our form of being annoying is to ask things such as, are you still my friend? Do you still love me? I still love you. Please don't be mad at me, and so forth. Sir, if your definition of being annoying is to constantly invade someone's personal space, touching them and verbally bothering them constantly while they're clearly pissed off at you, you need to learn when to keep your shit to yourself because that behavior is not cute in real life. That's harassment. And for God's sake, stop touching people so much. Damn. Anyway, he talks about the experience at the Airbnb and I'll just let the document speak for itself. When he says, this is my annoying, petty, and high-pitched voice that I use to annoy others. Even then, there was no response, and I finished by kissing her on the cheek, something that I unironically would do to my straight male friends to get on their nerves. Like, what I said during the Uber incident, this shit is not okay. You do not get to invade someone's personal space and touch them without consent in any manner. Even kissing on the cheek is not okay if you didn't sign up for it. This man cannot be so dense to not know how it can be perceived or feel for a woman to suddenly have a man on top of her and trying to kiss her. That shit is revolting. And if he is that dense, man needs to fucking get a reality check because none of this shit is okay. It doesn't matter if you say you weren't planning on doing anything more. This shit is gross. This is 100% assault, bro just admitted to it, and doesn't even realize how his actions can traumatize someone who once trusted him. That's terrible. He then tries saying there's a gotcha moment in Lily's document where she says he apologizes, but not once in the screenshot he provides does he ever say I'm sorry. All he says is it's on me and I love you, which are not apologies by the way. He also assumes that a clearly upset person saying I'm not sure what more there is to say equates to we good. Like, bro, I know you're socially inept like a rock, but come on, really? It's clear she's still pissed off, but doesn't want to talk anymore because she's overwhelmed. It's not hard! Anyway, he tries closing this out by reaffirming he's never been intimate with anyone else besides his partner. And then he'll graduate and leave, and doesn't plan on coming back. Which I really hope he doesn't come back because he's definitely not welcome. Also, he tries to cash out by selling his model and assets before he leaves. But the funny part is his own model mama denounces him instead offering his model art to be free lair or rigging practice. They clarify in a later post that it will be art only and not the original files. It'll be downsized, which makes sense so no one can use it as a model. Nikto, who has done a few audio commissions for Tora, has publicly stated that Tora cannot resell his commissions. And with that piss poor excuse of an apology document, the guy got rightfully pounced on his replies and quote retweets. Not only does he never apologize to Lily or at any named victims in particular, he fails to truly take accountability by never acknowledging the assault was assault and that his harassment is harassment. During this time of the fallout, Toro's profile bio changed to remove his header and all of his bio to simply say, deleting on 320. His discord had also become dark, with a black profile picture reminiscent of teenagers going through their brooding phase even though this man is in his mid-twenties. Later, the evening of March 18th, he said these final words. Final additional message before I'll delete everything. I hurt a lot of people, and it, it is my fault. It has been a long time coming, and I have gotten what I deserve. I'll be paying for it by losing everything and everyone I've known for this entire time. Oh, cry me a river. Please do not attack anyone else who may be involved or want to share their opinion. I have, of course, seen many nasty messages to myself and to many others. I appreciate all constructive messages that criticize me or want to believe I'll learn from all of this. Those who wanted to believe that I can be a better person are appreciated. I will also no longer be selling anything since you will need permission from the artist to do so. Any artist that I have commissioned is now allowed to do whatever they wish. I hope anyone affected negatively can move on in life. I won't be returning on any content creation platform. And hopefully this will all just be something to learn from to myself and everyone else involved. I could have just run away completely pretending that my time here was all a dream. 
I only made these final statements because I know a lot of people would want closure instead of you just left. Direct all of your hate toward me if you have any. Anyone else involved or making their opinions on the matter are no way at fault. Earl straight up tries acting like a martyr, thinking he had a positive influence in the sphere. Then, a few hours after this was not received well by the community at large, he deactivated his Twitter, deleted his YouTube and TikTok accounts, and his Twitch still remained untouched for that evening until it, too, turned dark the next day. It's fascinating, isn't it? This man couldn't even last to his final day that he said in his bio. He just up and left. Truly a pussy. Personally, I wouldn't be surprised if he goes against his word in the future and tries to come back on an alt. It is my hope that with this video, there is at least some archive and evidence to prevent him from doing what he did before to countless VTubers. I also hope this serves as a warning for those that do engage in similar behavior to Tora with their countless flirting and unsolicited NSFW messages to others, that your behavior is not appreciated nor welcome. One day, your actions will bite you in the ass. This is not isolated to male VTubers, by the way. I do not want you to come out of this video thinking, Ew, male VTubers are cringe and flirty and gross. No, this behavior is found regardless of gender identity and sexual preferences. You have degenerates amongst any sex who think they can get in the pants of whoever, especially if they have a notable following on a platform. I hope VTubers can recognize this toxic, gross behavior for what it is and not allow giving these gross and vile people any sort of platform to have power or weight or clout over. This shit is disgusting, and I'm glad I finally have some energy and motivation to talk about it. And frankly, talk about any bullshit I experience here in the VTuber community. Because, <laughs> oh boy, let me tell ya, so much shit happens here on a daily basis, it's fucking insane. And 2024 is looking to be quite a year in general. Most things aren't worth talking about, but when you see a fallout as spectacular as this one that many indies were left talking about, and the person in question has actually been run off the platform, it's kind of nice. Also, I want to emphasize before we end this video, that though I'll tend to be focusing on the bad eggs in the VTuber space going forward, there are tons, if not hundreds of indies who are just doing their thing and staying in their own lane and making wonderful content. For now, we can be relieved that this sex pest will currently not pester anyone else for the time being hopefully forever. In the meantime, please check out the victims in the description below. Many thanks to Lily for having the courage to speak out first, giving courage to others to lend their voices as well. Keep it vibing everyone, till next time. By the way, I'll do a follow-up video because a certain small obscure podcast group of three pleasant individuals decided to try and insert themselves with really bad takes about the Taurus situation and their victims. Look forward to that. I'll be working on it after this one goes up. Okay, bye!